Loose Geysers from Team 23, last but not least, with an interesting topic about will science still exist? Is this on? It's not on, yeah. So, we've heard it many times before. Facts no longer seem relevant. Scientific evidence has become equally important as opinions, and so do alternative facts. Science is losing importance, impact, and influence. And in fact, trust in science may be lower than ever before. So the question then is, how can we scientists improve society if society doesn't trust science anymore? If our fellow citizens don't trust us anymore? I'm Luz Keizers from Developmental Psychology, and together with my colleagues, I thought we'd end this day with an optimistic note. Will science still exist in 2025? Please allow us to highlight a possible route out of this war on science. It's the Swiss route. If you've never been to Switzerland, it's a beautiful country. It's true. It has great Alps, beautiful valleys, and it produces the best chocolate. And it has Heidi, so it also has lots of female talent. The Swiss country is separated by mountains. It has valleys. And in these autonomous valleys, in these small villages, the people live in peace. And they produce the most beautiful products, not bothered by what's going on on the other side of the mountain. One valley has specialized in the best cheese in the world. Yet another valley produces the most beautiful watches. And a third value is really specialized in cuckoo's clocks. When I started to work here in Tilburg University a bit more than a year ago, I actually realized that Tilburg University is a bit like Switzerland, without the Alps. It has beautiful valleys, green valleys, a psychology valley, an economy valley, and a data scientist valley. There, they produce the best quality products, top-notch scientific research. But when it comes to regaining trust in science, Top quality research doesn't suffice. The first problem is that the big problems of society are complex. Let's look at an example, the rising mental health problems among the young. A brain researcher may claim that it is visible in the brain now. A parenting researcher may say, no, no, it's due to over-involved and intrusive parenting. And a sociologist may claim it is all due, due to the pressure on the educational system. Each expert, each scientist, would be completely right, but each of them would fail to see the complete picture. The second problem lies in the fact that people are so different. We are all unique. We have different names, different colors, different genders. So when I have a problem, I need a personalized solution. In fact, I went to a hairdresser this, uh, this weekend. I hope you know this. Um, and I could choose from 27 different shampoos. One for curly hair, one for greasy hair, one for ultra extra dry hair. But when I'm a teenager and I feel depressed and I go to my family doctor, then I get the same treatment as everyone else. Isn't that strange? Scientific interventions are evidence-based, but they are average-based. A one-size solution that may not fit anyone very well. Please allow me to highlight an example of how we've dealt with this second challenge at Tilburg, at Tilburg School of Social and Behavioral Sciences. We've established the Tilburg Experience Sampling Center. Methodologists and theoretical researchers from different disciplines come together to work on important societal problems, such as depression among the young. We're tracking teenagers with their smartphones. We, we assess their heart rate, their emotions, their movements, and we want to identify in a much earlier phase which children become depressed. And at the same time, through their smartphones that they're carrying around five, five, five hours a day anyway, we offer them an early, cheap, and personalized intervention. We're actually actively seeking for collaboration, so if you want to get on board, please join us. 2025 
it's still very far away, but big problems are facing the world. Unemployment, cybercrime, and mental health problems. Unfortunately, it may very well be that opinions and alternative facts, or even lies, take over our position as a solution to these problems. And then I hear you think, hey, but you just said we are like Switzerland. What about our green valleys? What about our experts? What about our top quality research? Yes, you're completely right. I do think that we have excellent... I do think we have excellent research here, but it is not enough. Will the Swiss companies survive if people don't buy cuckoo's clocks anymore? Will our university survive if people do buy our evidence anymore? I strongly believe that we need to get out of our valleys, look over, over our disciplinary mountains, and build bridges. So when we rethink the structure of the university for 2025, this is what I'm hoping for. First, we need to invest in the solid pillars, the top quality research that is taking place in our beautiful green valleys. But at the same time, we need to use this solid fundament to build these multidisciplinary and tax-heavy bridges over troubled water. Thank you very much.